Continue live right here at Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani, Andrew Filipponi with you. Andrew, before we get to the calls real quick, I want to get your take on what the Penguins must do. Do they need seismic change, line changes? They put Dominic Simone again on the top line. Yeah, I'm done and with all that. due respect to him, he's not a top six guy. He has one goal in 34 games. Hornquist seems like a natural fit moving forward. He's done nothing. What do they do? I would put McCann up there. I, mean, that, I thought he clicked with Crosby earlier in the year. Get him going with, with uh, Rust, he, or with Gensel, excuse me. He gave them a shot in the arm when the trade happened. I would go back to that. You've got nothing to lose at this point, Bob. In, in fact, the series probably is already lost, but I would go out on my shield and play McCann with Crosby. The other thing they got to do is show a little pushback. Uh, I thought we'd see that at the beginning of the game, to begin the second period, and the third period especially, and I didn't see much of that. And, and this is a team that has to do this, and they have to become more disciplined. They cannot do that, and I can't believe Sullivan's preaching this. I think the players have just become undisciplined. Let's go to the lines. we got a lot of them. Aaron and Green Tree, you're first. What's up, Aaron? How are you? Hey, Bob, how you doing? Good, thanks. Hey, a uh, question to ask you. In that first game against the Islanders, mm -hmm. the Penguins had 40-some shots on the Islanders. Yep. And they were good shots. Now, Murray had 20-some shots on him, but he gave up four goals. And, and the other goal for the Islanders, he only gave up one goal out of 40-some shots. What's the story there? I, right. think they're just too, I think the players are just too slow. They can't get the puck. And I think Smith should start on Tuesday. All right, no, well, that's ridiculous. That. that is ridiculous. You're not paying attention. Here's the thing. I, I do think right now the Penguins have fallen into a little bit of a problem here with uh, their zone presence, both ends. You know, they can't get out of the zone sometimes, and the Islanders give them credit. I for thought that. one of the blown opportunities in this game is they had a power play barely, very, barely, very early on, and they barely registered a barely. shot. That's and where I, you got to start. I thought that could have been an opportunity to get things going. And, and the other thing is the Islanders have an identity. We know who they are. They're a defensive first team. What is the Penguins' identity? Confused. They're not a speed team anymore, Bob. That's the thing, but they think they are. I know, that's the problem. They're still trying to play that. They have to un understand they're not that team anymore, and they have to adjust. One thing that Barry Trotz, I'll give him credit about this, he lost John Tavares. Nobody thought the Islanders would get into the playoffs. This was going to be a rebuild, yep. right? Yep. And yet here they are, which is why you don't know about sports. And the thing about it, he sometimes... I think benefits by not having a lot of star players. There are no egos in that room. It's very difficult when you have star players sometimes to coach them the way you want. And, and it, it's good, but it's bad at sometimes too. All right, let's go back to the lines. We'll go out to Eric in Johnstown. Eric, you're on the sports call. Go ahead. Gentlemen, great show. Andrew, uh, fantastic addition. Great Thank you. Glad to you. have you. Hey, Tiger Woods went in today is just unbelievable. Um, <laughs> touching on what Pony said earlier about the uh, – uh, past indiscretions of the Tiger and whatnot. Uh, again, to see what he did against that field, who's who in golf today, hats off. That's got to be the story of the year. Uh, great show, guys. I'll listen for your response. Oh, hey, you. Eric, I agree. And here's the other thing. You know, again, the personal issues aside, I, I don't judge athletes by the, that. Because if you did, there would be a lot of people you would probably discredit. I look at what he's been able to do. Uh, and, and he mentioned the field, Andrew. I, I I don't know if you follow it closely. To the field right now is much, and I'll say with all caps, much more difficult than it was for Tiger when he was dominating. Yeah. There was Mickelson, Els, and not many other challengers on a consistent basis. This group of young players is good and deep. Well, and he had to not come back and make a huge charge and leapfrog like 20 guys. But at the top of the leaderboard on the back nine, you had Kepka, who's a great major champion. Dustin, jo Dustin Johnson, who might be the most talented golfer in the game right now, and Molinari, who doesn't make or is not a mistake-prone player. And I thought, Bob, we saw, like, the Tiger intimidate yeah. the guys he was playing with today. Finau and Molinari, it reminded me, it turned back the clock to when Tiger, when he was in those final pairings, I thought would put additional pressure on the guys. And he, I thought his body language today was phenomenal. If you didn't know any better, if it wasn't shot in HD, you would have thought you were watching a tournament from like 2000 or 2001. <laughs> You're right. Seriously. The thing is, Molinari never makes mistakes. I had tweeted this morning that he had gone 41 consecutive holes without a bogey. No player has ever won the Masters with fewer than five bogeys. He was on pace to do that. But two doubles, and he's chunked one on 15. And again, I got to believe the roars from Tiger affect those guys. It's just human nature. Well, I mean, not only that, the roars for Tiger, but they're getting cheered when they make mistakes. Yeah. He, uh, when, when Molinari put it in the water at 13, I thought we saw him kind of come undone there. He yeah. felt it. You can't do that in majors. All right, let's go back to the lines. We got Ken in Pittsburgh. You're on right now. Ken, go right ahead. 
Yeah, guys. Um, I said a couple months ago this team was on the verge of becoming a laughing stock, and they're proving it in this playoff. I think it's time for Sullivan to go. Uh, That's not going to happen. It's time to and it, make nor should more. it happen. Why do you think that? I think it's time to make some wholesale changes. That might happen. Not wholesale. They're going to make changes if they do not advance beyond this round. They will make. And they changes. won't. So well, it's over. We'll see. You can say that a lot of people do, and I understand. But I also know. Thanks for the call. I also understand that um, four teams have done it, and you got to play it one game at a time. They have the talent to do it. We'll see. All right, line four we go. That's Dave and Clarion. What's up, Dave? Oh, not so much. How are you guys doing Good, tonight? Thanks. Hi, Dave. Uh, first of all, I'm a huge Mike Sullivan fan, but the one thing that I just can't figure out is his infatuation with Dominic Simone, and especially putting him on the, the, the first line. I mean, he fanned on two good opportunities tonight. Well, that Gensel pass it's, was a little hard one to handle, but... Why is Gensel that, making that pass in the first place? He's a 40-goal scorer, and it's a two-on-one. Take the yeah. shot. And... You know, he only has seven shots in three games. Crosby has seven shots in three games and no points. But thank you, I'm Matt. Still trying to, I'm still trying to figure out why Simone is getting so well, much time. I mean, I... Because it's I, a metrics thing. And, and, and all I can tell you is I think Sidney Crosby likes Dominic Simone. And I like him in, in terms of hockey IQ. But at some point, if you're going to play in the top six, you've got to score goals. You cannot just possess the puck and that's it. Yeah. Flock, you don't remember Ron Flockhart, do you? I remember the name. Well, Ron Flockhart, we used to call it Flocky Hockey. He would do that a lot. Circle the zone. Oh, my God, he's all over. And he shoots it wide, and that's the end of the play. First minute of the game, Crosby had Gensel back door. He's got to finish that. And that's another chance to get the arena buzzing, which is something we did not see today. There no. was not sustained energy in there. Bob in Swissvale, you're on the sports call. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, good evening. Hey, uh, I think the, the Pens have just totally fallen into a lackadaisical kind of an attitude, and uh, they're kind of falling. Yeah, uh, good evening, gentlemen. I uh, just He's kind on of delay. think that the Pens have uh, kind of fallen into a lackadaisical kind of an attitude. I think I just you've that. got the stars, and they have forgotten how to perform. I don't know if it's lackadaisical. It's just undisciplined, and, and I, I think there's a difference between the two there. Here's an interesting question as we go to break, Andrew, and I'll toss it out to you. Mm -hmm. You think about it, and, and you can call us. Tampa Bay is also down three games to none as Columbus, who's never won a playoff series, is about to do that. Who is more prepared to make a comeback, Tampa or Pittsburgh? Andrew will talk about that, and so will you when we come back. This is the nightly sports call provided by Ireland Contracting on the Bordis and Bordis Hotline. We're coming back right after this.